Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 79 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about tracing in ASP.NET. Tracing enables us to view diagnostic information about a request, which is very useful when debugging application-related problems. In this session, we're going to concentrate on the basics of tracing, and in a later video session, we'll discuss about where tracing can actually be used. In fact, we'll discuss about an example where we will solve the root cause of a performance-related issue very easily by using tracing. Tracing can be turned on or off either at the application level or at the page level. To enable tracing at the application level, all we have to do is set the trace elements enabled attribute to true. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have an ASP.NET web application project here on this webform 1.aspx. I have got a grid view control. And when this webform 1 loads up, we are creating an instance of the data set object. And we are invoking the readXML method, which reads the contents of the countries.xml file into the data set, which in turn is used as the data source for the grid view control. And finally, we are invoking the data bind method. So, we have this countries.xml file within the project. When I, when I run this web form, as you might expect, the data will be loaded into this web form, into this grid view control. Now, I want to enable tracing for this web application. And if I want to enable tracing at the application level within web.config file, I can set the trace elements and uh, enabled attribute to true. So trace enabled is equal to true. That's it. Now, let me go ahead and run this now. So the web form data is loaded. But then on the page, I don't see any trace information. So where is this trace information logged? When we enable tracing in web.config file for the entire application, the trace information is actually logged in a trace file called trace.axt. So let me copy this URL, open another tab in the browser, paste the URL there. And instead of webform1.aspx, I'm going to type in trace.axt. And press Enter. Look at that. I get this trace viewer file and here look at this it's web form one and we made a get request it's not a post back request so if you look at the verb it's get request and the http status code is 200 which means okay and the file is web form one.aspx and the time of your request okay and if you want to de see the complete details of this trace you can click on view details and there's very useful information here which can be used for debugging purposes in a later video session we will see how this information can be used to solve the root cause of a performance related issue so for example uh, look at this we have request details what's the session id what is the time of the request what is the encoding for the request and response encoding and what is the http status code 200 in this case which means okay and and the request type is a get and not a postback request. And another interesting thing here is you can see all the page level events and the time they take to complete. Okay. And then further down, we have the control tree, the entire control tree on the web form. Okay. And then further down, we have information about session state, application state, any cookies that we have. You know, that's a session cookie. And any cookies, you know, persistent cookies that we may have written, HTTP header information, form variables collection, query strings, and HTTP server variables. Okay, so a lot of useful information on this, uh, uh, you know, trace page. All right, so at the moment, we have enabled tracing for all the pages within our web application. Now, let's say I want to disable tracing for a specific page. For example, within this web application project, I have test.aspx page. Now, let's go ahead and request test.aspx instead of web form one. So I'm going to say test.aspx. Now, if I come here and refresh my trace viewer file, look at that. I also get the test page. Okay, but let's say I want to disable tracing for test page. How do I do that in spite of having it enabled at the application level? All you have to do is on, on the page, set the trace elements to false. That's it. Okay, now let's go ahead and request this page once again. I press F5 here. Okay, I got that. And let me refresh this now. Look at that. You know, the trace information for test page is not logged. And let me access web form one just to make sure it's still being logged. So I have web form one.aspx. Now I come here, press F5, look at that. Web form one, you know, it's traced. 
but if I go back to test.aspx and I refresh this you know it's not traced anymore okay so to disable tracing for a specific page set trace is equal to false in the web forms page directive and that's what we have just done and if tracing is enabled at the application level the trace messages are returned to a file called trace.axt trace.axt file can only be accessed locally so if you look at this now my web server and my web server is on this machine and i am accessing the trace viewer file locally on that web server now if I try to access this trace viewer file from a remote machine you know I will not be able to do that okay but then is there a possibility to access this trace viewer file from a remote machine absolutely for that you have to set the local only attribute to false by default this attribute will be true if you don't set that it will be true because trace file has got very useful information uh, that could be I mean security sensitive information that could be useful to a hacker to hack into the server so set this attribute to false only when it is required by default it is true which means this trace file is only available when accessed on that web server locally if you access that from a remote machine it's not available but however we can make it available by setting this local only attribute of the trace element to false let's see how to do that so within web.config file all I have to do is set local only attribute to false this will be true by default you're selling not only make this available locally but also remotely that's what this attribute means when you set it to false to append trace messages now if you look at this the trace messages are actually returned to this trace file now let's say instead of you know accumulating these trace messages uh, you know I, I want these trace messages actually to be returned on the page itself at the end of the page I want the trace messages to be displayed is it possible absolutely all you have to do is you know for this trace element there's another attribute called page output you can set that to true so the moment you set that to true you're telling write the trace information at the end of the page so now for web for this test page if you remember we have disabled tracing so let's you know request web form 1 so we're from 1.aspx now look at that the trace information is actually written to the end of the page itself okay so that's how we we display the trace information at the end of the page and use request limit attribute this request limit is very interesting now how long should we capture this trace information in the trace.axt file let's go ahead and disable this page output we don't want that to be on the page okay now we have this trace.axt file so let me refresh this web page so if you look at this trace.axt file it's actually capturing you know if you press F5 so many times you know I pressed like seven eight times now I press F5 look at that there are these trace logs all the requests are captured within the trace file but how many requests are going to be logged is there any limit for these trace messages absolutely and how do we determine that to determine that or to specify the limit for the trace messages to be returned to the trace log we use an attribute called request limit by default its value is 10 okay so if you look at this one look at this approximately I mean there are 10 entries here and you can see this remaining 0 which means it will not log any trace messages you know going further now if you look at this the last request was locked as 1838154 now if I request this perform one when I press F5 I pressed it a couple of times let me refresh this by pressing F5 look at that you know the trace information is not captured for this web form 1 in the trace viewer because the request limit has reached the default value is 10 and it stopped tracing okay now we can change that using request limit for example let's say I want to track only the first five requests I can set that to five let me save that let's go back here let's re-request this page let's press F5 here look at that so I got one request at 1840 let me press F5 you know a couple of times now look at this there are four remaining entries that that can be logged now if I press F5 here there's one remaining entry and if I press F5 here I press F5 now 
so remaining is zero which means from now on since that request limit has reached you know the the trace information is is not logged for any web form okay so that's the request limit attribute use request limit attribute to control the number of trace requests that are stored on the server the default is 10 after this limit is reached the server will stop writing to the trace file okay if you want to log trace messages even after the limit request limit has reached then set most recent attribute to true when this attribute is set to true the old entries in the trace log are discarded and the new entries get added but at any given point of time only five entries are maintained you know it keeps on discarding the old entries and keeps on adding the new entries or new requests okay let's quickly look at that attribute so I'm going to set this most recent is equal to true and we have set the request limit to 5 so let me now save that first and come here okay so I'm requesting this one let's come here request this okay so that's one request let me press F5 1 2 3 4 so now if we refresh this we should have five entries and remember the first request was made at 184137 now when i make another request and come here look at what happens to this 184137 when i refresh this that's go that goes away look at that it's gone away and i got another request at 184157 okay so that's the use of most recent attributes Okay, when this attribute is set to true, the old entries in the trace log are discarded and the new entries get added. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.